Good morning, Jaap here from Skinner River Fly Supply. Today we're going to talk about uh, fly fishing for Chinook. We're going to do a little mini series in uh, great outdoors of BC. And um, today is going to be all about the gear for Chinook. Here we go. For a rod for Chinook, I like to use a long rod with a, a steep taper, with an aggressive taper. The reason is that we fish here a lot with long, heavy sink tips. And to get those out of the water, you need a lot of leverage. And you can only do that with a long rod. The steep taper will help to lengthen the effective amount of displacement of your line that you can displace. The further the rod bends down towards the butt, in, in effect the rod becomes shorter. So you want a rod with a strong taper. Some of my favorite rods are uh, Guideline uh, Le C rods. This is the 14.8 for a 10 weight. Uh, another really great rod for Chinook are the old Thomas and Thomas rods in the 14 foot 9 weight, 15 foot 10 weight. But any rod that is uh, a 9 or a 10 weight, more than 14 feet, and with a very strong, aggressive uh, taper. For a reel, I like to use a reel with a really good drag. That's my only criterion for uh, a reel for Chinook. I also like strong frame rigidity, so that you don't get a lot of uh, bending and wobbling. And, but uh, the drag is the key thing. There are people who fish for them with uh, click and pole reels, but be prepared to get some bruised knuckles and uh, to lose some fish. Because um, if you don't stop Chinook right from the start and, and put a heavy drag on them, chances are that they're gonna get away on you. I filled the reel up with uh, braid, plain braid in 80 pound or 60 pound, depending a little bit on the capacity of your reel. I like to get 300 yards on there. And after the braid, I place my running line. I connect the running line and the braid by ways of a loop system. For the braid, I use a bimini twist. And for the running line, I use a non-slip mono loop, also known as a Rapala knot. My favorite shooting line is Guideline Comp Line. Uh, it's by far the best shooting line that I have seen. I use it in a 50 pound test. And I connect it at the front end also with a non-slip mono loop. I mostly fish two types of lines. Sketchy types of lines and Scandinavian full sinking shooting heads. When I first started fishing for Chinook about 30 years ago, we only had like long belly line, like full length level lines. And that was not much fun to fish with. Um, so I started creating my own lines, bucking up pieces of heavy uh, 11 weight or 12 weight lines and then connecting them to sink one or intermediate sections and then uh, a sink tip, a long sink tip, um, like a type eight or something. Uh, and But then nowadays we have some great lines on the market that do exactly that. One of my favorite sketchy type lines is the Airflow Fist. It's a float, intermediate, and then a sinking section. And then on that end you attach your sink tip. That gets it really nicely down and deep and it keeps your line nice, a little bit slower. It slows down your swing a little bit. For tips on something like a Skagit Fist or a floating Skagit Belly, I use usually, most commonly, 15 foot T14. Sometimes I use 15 foot T11 or type 8 15 foot. And occasionally I go with longer tips, like 18 foot T14. Uh, 
and rarely I go to T18, like 50 foot T18 or 18 foot T18. I use these setups with Skagit type lines, whether it's a fist or a floating belly, in water that has a very classic setup where you have the faster current on the outside and the slower current on the inside. That type of water requires you to get a little bit more speed on the inside. I will go into that more in detail in another video. The other line that I use quite regularly are guideline full sinking shooting heads in the 3D series or 4D series. Um, you can get them in a variety of uh, grad graded sinking rates like you can get sync 1, sync 3, sync 5 or something. And those kind of a setups that uh, where the full line is sinking gradually, I use those in situations where I fish in a generally fast flow and where the site on the high bank, where is the deeper water, uh, is at my side. So I fish that sinking belly very slow into that deeper, deeper water. That's the situations where I fish that, those kind of lines. For a leader, it's pretty simple. I keep the leader quite short, maybe four or five feet. And I use 30 pound monofilament. I connect the leader with a bimini twist to the loop of the tip. Then we get to the flies for Chinook. Um, when I first started fishing, it was very common to just use like big steelhead flies and swing those. Uh, but Chinook mostly feed on fish, bait fish. So very early on I started experimenting with salt water patterns, bait fish patterns, like lefties deceivers and Klaus's minnows. And those were uh, very productive. In those early days uh, there were a lot more Chinook and it was um, much better test grounds for those kind of flies. So, uh, those definitely outproduced more classic patterns. Over the years I've perfected uh, bait fish patterns for myself for Chinook and the end result is the King's Candy. Uh, it's a very uh, big fly really with a lot of flash uh, but it casts relatively easy for the size that it is. Another pattern that I like a lot is uh, the prom dress which was originally developed by I'm sorry I forget the name of the originator, but uh, it was developed for steelhead and we adapted that quite a bit, made it much bigger. This is a prom dress. Um, it's got a snow runner underwing, it's tied on a tube, it's got a bead to weigh it down a little bit, you can get them unweighted too. And it has a lot of uh, flesh in the tail, either blue or silver, with a chartreuse marabou overwing. A uh, very good fly that's a little bit smaller than those uh, King's Candy flies. It's one of the favorite patterns at Skeena River Lodge and a lot of snook have been caught on that fly. Now a little bit about the colors of the flies and in what kind of situation to use them. When the fish are fresh coming in and moving, I like to use a lot of flesh, silver or maybe blue, with chartreuse. So chartreuse flies with a lot of flesh. That's my standard fly to fish for moving fish. Once the fish are holding, they become a bit more territorial and they seem to be really attracted to pink, orange, that kind of a coloration. So at that time we fish a lot of pink flies. The third color I use is black. Black I use either in situations where it's just low light, very early in the morning or late in the evening or when fish are very uh, reluctant to take. When they've been holed up for a long time in a pool, sometimes they, uh, they just don't take any flies anymore. And at that point, sometimes uh, a black fly is a bit more subtle and they will take those. And then last thing of the rigging is the hook. Make sure that the hook is strong and big. Uh, I like to fish 3.0 Chemco 600 SPs, very strong, very big hook. And you need that because if you get like 30, 40 pound Chinook and it goes downstream, you have to be able to put a lot of pressure on them. And if the hook is not strong enough, then it will bend out. So I like very hardened steel hooks from high quality manufacturers. 
So that's my Chinook setup in a nutshell. Uh, I hope you um, found it informative. If you have your own setups, and uh, I would love to hear about that. Leave your uh, questions or remarks in the comment section below. See you next time. Keep your waders wet.